let's talk about the brachial plexus. This is a bundle of nerves that converge, uh, intermingle, and then diverge into terminal branches that run through uh, the supply of the upper extremity that run through the axillary region. It's called the brachial plexus. A plexus, like I said, is a converging, intermingling, and diverging of nerves from the um, roots and trunks of different vertebral or spinal cord levels and out into terminal branches, um, peripheral nerves that we would have named. So like radial nerve, muscular cutaneous nerve, median nerve, that sort of thing. So we're gonna go through the brachial plexus. I'm gonna show you how to draw it. I'll only go through it once because you can just rewind the video. Okay. You're going to have, you're going to have you're going to have some roots. Um, these are, when I say roots, I'm referring to the ventral primary ramus of the spinal nerve at these cord levels, C5 through T1. C5 through T1. Those are going to be your roots. C5 and C6 are going to join together. C7 continues alone. C8 and T1 join together. If you're at this point finding yourself confused as to why there's a C8 spinal nerve, find my spinal, the spine and spinal nerve segmentation video and I'll explain that. Right? So we've moved from roots and now you're going to have um, these structures join into trunks, okay? So you're gonna have roots and then trunks. Now these trunks, we're moving from the roots of the individual, like C6 root, C8 root. The trunks are going to be, uh, and just for a second, imagine I'm drawing a left uh, brachial plexus, what I'm sketching, or a right brachial plexus from the rear. It's basically the same from posterior view. So it's going to come out of the roots in my neck. And so far, I haven't gone very far laterally in my torso, so they're still going to be lined up uh, superior, middle, and inferior. So the trunk's running out. You'll have the superior trunk, the middle trunk, and the inferior trunk. Okay. Now, the uh, trunks are going to divide. So there are going to be some divisions. We're going to say anterior and posterior divisions, uh, just because anatomically how they're structured in that frontal plane. So the the anatom uh, the anterior divisions of the superior middle trunk, they're going to come together. Okay? The anterior division of the inferior trunk is going to keep going on its own. So these two are going to kind of come together, and. Uh, make uh, the next part on their own division wise and the inferior trunk is going to continue as its own uh, the anterior division as its own now the posterior divisions of all three trunks are going to join together and they're going to continue out as a structure now we're going to call these uh chords okay so these are chords. Now we're starting to get out and, tur and curve uh, inferior, inferior laterally. We're going to curve down through the axilla. So now we're going to refer to these as the lateral cord, medial cord, and posterior cord. So posterior cord is made up of the posterior divisions of all three of the trunks. And it is also located anatomically posterior to the artery that runs through here, the brachial artery, after it's gone through the axilla and it started to move down through here. So there's going to be a big fat artery in the way in the lab that you'll have to move in that, that uh, neurovascular sheath that will cut open. And that's where you're going to find the posterior cord. But right now I'm drawing this without the uh, vasculature. So your, your axillary artery section will be for about here and then we're down into brachial artery. So kind of picture that. Lateral cord, medial cord, posterior cord. Now the cords are going to um, continue as structures called uh, terminal branches. Right? Terminal branches. The lateral cord is going to continue as a terminal branch. The medial cord is going to continue as a terminal branch. The lateral and medial cord are each going to give a contribution to another cord, or another uh, terminal branch. And then the posterior cord is going to continue 
as well, and it's going to give off two terminal branches. So I'm going to label these terminal branches as one, two, three, four, five. You can label them however you want. I'm just going to name them in a minute. And these terminal branches, starting with one and two from the posterior cord, is going to terminate in the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. The lateral cord is going to terminate as the terminal branch musculocutaneous nerve. The medial cord is going to terminate as the terminal branch of ulnar nerve. And then the medial, sorry, medial and lateral contributions of the lateral and medial cords are going to come together in the middle and form this fourth terminal branch, which is the median nerve. So one is axillary nerve, two is radial nerve, three is the musculocutaneous nerve, four is the median nerve, and five is the ulnar nerve. All right, so far so good. This is the brachial plexus. So you can practice drawing that. We're gonna go from roots to trunks, superior, middle, inferior, divisions, anterior and posterior divisions of each. Remember how they go together. Forming lateral, medial, and posterior cords, which are gonna terminate in uh, branches or terminal branches. And these are the named nerves that supply the entire uh, upper extremity. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and maybe later in a clinical or neuro class, you might wanna, you're gonna need to be able to anatomically trace back the contributing cord levels with those nerves so that I can trace Median nerve seems to have a little bit from everything all the way back from the entire plexus, but ulnar nerve, you're gonna notice terminal branch, medial cord, anterior division, inferior trunk. It really only has contribution from C8 and T1 uh, with that ulnar nerve, so that I can trace that back. That, that's not neither here nor there. So that's the basic brachial plexus. Now for the fun part, you're not going to like this if you are a student who has a test on that. If you're sitting at home and got no pressure, this part would be fascinating, um, probably. There are several other nerves that come off of this base or um, skeletal structure, right? Um, schematic, I guess, structure. We're gonna do it like this. There's going to be a branch here off the ventral primary ramus of C5, and then C5, C6 and C7 are all going to give a contribution to this really long nerve that's going to come all the way down here. So there's a branch. We're going to call that A and B. And out here on the superior trunk, there's going to be a branch C and another branch D. Then we're going to move out here and off of the lateral cord, there's going to be another branch E. The posterior cord is going to have three branches, three little neural branches off it. E, and we're going to get F, G, H, and the medial cord is going to have one, two, three branches. So H, I, J, K. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven branches in addition to in addition to the five terminal branches. All right. So sixteen uh, nerves. You're gonna to have to know off the brachial plexus, including the structure. And if you're a student in a class, you will have to draw this for a test. So start doodling it now. That way you can sketch this out in the margin or if not the actual test question, and you can use it to answer uh, clinical application questions. So let's go through these uh, nerves. So A up here, and you have to picture kind of where the scapula is in your atlas in corresponding uh, to the brachial plexus. It looks like it's really long and drawn out, but in actuality it covers a space of about four inches in your body. It's all tucked in there. This is going to be your dorsal scapular nerve. B is your long thoracic nerve. We talked about that in another video as the one that innervates the long thoracic, or sorry, the long thoracic innervates the serratus anterior muscle, and it's on the surface. That's why this area, one of the reasons it's so ticklish or so susceptible to maybe a, a, a well-delivered hook or even a knife strike in this area where you can incapacitate that long thoracic nerve inhibiting or um, completely incapacitating the serratus anterior and the ability to stabilize the scapula. We'll get into that later. So uh, since this is public on YouTube, we don't want to talk too much about how to injure somebody. We'll save that for in class. Dorsal scapular, long thoracic. 
Now over here, C, it's usually hard to find because this is very proximal. This is going to be the nerve to subclavius, that subclavi uh, subclavicular muscle, subclavius. This is this little nerve that innervates it. And then D is going to be called the suprascapular nerve. Suprascapular nerve is the one that you're going to find when we do the scapula, goes through that suprascapular notch um, under that little ligament that crosses that notch and the suprascapular artery and goes over that. And then uh, I learned a, a little thing once. Uh, the Army goes over the bridge, the Navy sails under the bridge. So Navy being nerve, it's going to go under that little ligamentous bridge over the suprascapular notch suprascapular nerve, and the suprascapular artery would be the structure that goes over that little ligament, which makes no sense now, but we'll get back to it. Uh, nerve subclavius, suprascapular nerve. Let's get out here to E, lateral cord, lateral pectoral nerve. Let's go down here to I, medial cord, medial pectoral nerve, okay? So E is the lateral pectoral nerve, I is the medial pectoral nerve. Sometimes in some specimens or, or examples, some bodies, these two will join together and then uh, diverge again. Typically uh, not, but uh, just so you can, if you're trying to decide which one you have, when you find the muscle, you can trace it back up. Lateral cords, lateral pectoral nerve, medial cords, medial pectoral nerve. Let's keep going in alphabetical order. E, lateral pectoral nerve. F, thoracodorsal nerve. Thoracodorsal nerve runs with thoracodorsal artery, one of those terminal branches of the subscapular artery, one of the branches off the third section, three branches off the third section of the axillary artery that we covered in another video, thoracodorsal nerve. G and H, upper and lower subscapular nerves. Upper and lower subscapular nerves. In my mind, it should have been medial and lateral or proximal and distal, but nobody consulted me, so it's upper and lower subscapular nerves. Medial cord, you've got the medial pectoral nerve we uh, just identified, and then J and K are going to be the medial, brachial cutaneous, and medial antibrachial cutaneous. Uh, this is easy. To, first of all, they're all medial, all three of the branches off the medial cord, and they go like this. So they're moving from proximal to distal. Medial pectoral nerve, medial brachial cutaneous, medial antibrachial cutaneous. So it just moves right in order. So if you're curious as to which one's which. And these branches come out and run, you know, not the pectoral, but these two cutaneal uh, nerves are gonna run along with that art, uh, ulnar nerve. And sometimes they're pretty robust and, and easy to misidentify. That is the brachial plexus. You need to watch that again so that you can uh, see it. You know what, in the video, I'll, let me throw it up there one more time. Just how to draw your brachial plexus. Remember, you will have roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and terminal branches. I learned once, um, I'm super old, Randy Travis drinks cold beer. I had no idea who the hell Randy Travis was at the time, but he's some kind of race car driver or country western singer or some other uh, shit like that. But Whoever, pick somebody's name, RT. Randy Travis drinks cold beer. I can't condone that as a teetotaler, but that's the mnemonic I learned. So first I draw my roots. Five, six, seven, eight, and one. Five and six joined together. Seven's on its own. Eight and one joined together. And keep moving. Now I do trunks. Superior trunk, middle trunk, inferior trunk. Now I get to divisions. Anterior divisions of the Superior middle go together. Anterior division of the inferior goes on its own. Posterior divisions of all three join together and continue as their own. Now we've got a lateral cord, a posterior cord, and a medial cord. Now we're gonna get terminal branches. You're gonna have terminal branch from the lateral cord, two terminal branches from the posterior cord, and a terminal branch from the medial cord. And then the medial cord and the lateral, uh, lateral cord and medial cord are going to join together and give their own terminal branch. Now, I want to point something out here, that little schematic. In the body, you will see a very clear structure outlined in blue. That median nerve, musculocutaneous nerve, ulnar nerve, and the lateral and medial contributions, it forms a big letter M in the body. That's going to be a very important landmark. That's M, it stands for Mori, and that's how you're gonna remember it.
That's not actually true. It doesn't stand for anything, but it is in there. And then the other two divisions, terminal divisions, terminal branches of the posterior cord of the axillary and the radial, you'll see those posterior to the um, axillary and brachial arteries. Now, we're going to go back here. Trunk of five, or sorry, root of five. Boom. Got a, got a branch. Five, six, and seven all contribute to long thoracic. Superior trunk has nerve to subclavius and uh, suprascapular nerve. Phone's ringing. Lateral cord has one branch, lateral pectoral nerve. Medial cord has three branches, medial pectoral nerve, medial brachial cutaneous, medial antebrachial cutaneous. Posterior cord has thracodorsal nerve and upper and lower subscapular nerves. Then do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five terminals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, adjunctive or um, addended, uh, addendum branches, additional branches and nerves. And uh, that's it. Brachial plexus. If you're in a class of mine, you will have to draw it. Uh, hit the notifications, like, subscribe, share the channel.